Welcome to another edition of Pauline Interviews. How would you like to have a long, healthy life? That's a silly question, right? We all want a long, healthy life. Well, today I'm talking to a nutrition coach, Steve Acuff, who knows a lot about this. So in this edition, um, we will talk about organic whole foods and how they help. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Stephen, because I know a little bit about good food, but you know a lot more. Tell me um, how you got into this field and a little bit about your background. I began just uh, with a healthy curiosity. I went to hear a lecture about uh, food for better health, and it sounded interesting to me, so I tried it out, and I felt immediately better, uh, although I didn't have any health problems, but I felt more energetic, I felt clearer in my thoughts. Even after one day of mm -hmm. changing to organic whole foods, not eating sugar and chemicalized food, so that out of this short experiment now, I've been 48 years of uh, health. Yeah. 48 years ago? That was 48 years ago. Did I was 25 years old, and uh, fortunately I began at a time when the body still has a lot of regeneration power, so I was able to balance out the sins of my earlier food. And I've been doing that since then. Was the food that bad even 45 years ago? Oh yeah, sure. Really? You know, it was, you know, it was the uh -huh. sugar and the, I mean, it's well, lot, yeah, sugar. I remember that. It's too. a lot worse today than it was then, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't good. And it was the, the beginning of the organic food time, really. Did you have to go to a school or um, take some classes to learn this, or did you? I did take some uh, uh, courses, but basically it's self-taught. Mm -hmm. uh, you learn by doing it. I did have the great fortune to uh, learn with some very uh, talented and, and knowledgeable people so that I was able to build on my base. And because I learned alternative foods so thoroughly, uh, the biggest uh, break came to me in Germany when I, was, I lectured in Germany about uh, health. And a man who owns uh, several clinics invited me to develop a clinical program wow. so to be used in the clinic. And I did that for six years. Uh, giving counseling to the patients. It was mostly cancer patients, but there were other uh, departments involved. And uh, the patients would come and stay for five or six weeks, and we saw a lot of good results out of that, and the program is still going today. We Boy, start, you yeah. really were inspired that many years ago. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it's a thing that you, you learn by doing it, and then the uh, experience convinces you. So, mm -hmm. like, I'm not doing this because I'm convinced it's good. I'm doing it because my body has told me this is right you for have so proof. many years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, before we get into the health and nutrition, which is very important, um, I was reading a little bit about you, and there's a philosophy that you like, and it goes along with your teachings. It's about living in harmony, and it's called Wu Wei. I've never heard of that before. What is it? Uh, Wu Wei is the, the basic concept of Taoism. And Taoism is the, the philosophy of polarity. That is, we look at the world as a lot of, of polar opposites. The most basic polar opposite is man and woman. Uh, and uh, there is an attraction between opposites. I'm sure you know several of your viewers have noticed this. But um, also, summer, winter, day, night, everything is seen as the yin and the yang, as it's called in, the, in Taoism. And there's a pulsation in nature. Like right now, we look around and see things are blossoming out. This is the spring. And there's a power of nature behind this blooming. And so we could call it the order of nature, also as a word for the Tao. It's, it's a, an energy behind what's going on in nature. So what we do is we adapt ourselves to nature's rhythms and pulsations. So the Wu Wei literally means not doing or without effort. So just like the trees change in the seasons, we should adjust ourselves to these greater natural energies. And then we flow with the order of nature instead of against it. I'm following you somewhat, but could you give an example? Mm -hmm. Well, for an example, let's say it's the middle of the winter and my body is totally geared to keeping me warm because I have to maintain my body warm. And I like ice cream, so I just eat ice cream because I like ice cream. Uh -huh. So I put this cold mass on my body. Now this creates stress because my body is trying to keep me in balance with the winter cold. And I, I sabotage my body's efforts by eating ice cold things. So ice cold things are never good for us, but they're really bad in the winter. See, now I don't mean to be facetious, but if you're in a warm house, you still should eat a cold ice cream? Uh, well, this I'm is not a, trying to be funny, I mean, I'm just no, thinking. And, and the question is a good one, too. Uh, this brings us to another point, that because people live in central heating and are so uh, separated from nature's energies, 
they live in kind of a parallel universe and they get detached from uh, the order of nature. And so then they become very ill because they at some point will leave the house, go out and get into a cold car and drive off, and uh, their, their, their bodies are suddenly shocked. Mm -hmm. So this is what, so you try to, in the, in the winter, you eat warming foods, in the summer you eat cooling foods. So there'd be less, less illness in the winter if you ate properly. That's right. In fact, mm -hmm. I haven't seen a doctor since 1971 when I started this program. Wow. And, and I, I've been over 10, 10 years, but I thought that was a good, good thing. <laughs> Anyway, the doctors I see are naturopaths. They're kind of I'm more in tune with that. So yeah. that's another thing, but that's another story. Well, see, the, uh, the idea behind this is that with the food we eat creates a certain uh, energy. And so the body has needs. Like we have to keep a certain pH, you know, not too acidic, not too alkaline. We have to keep a certain body uh, uh, temperature, not too high, not too low. Blood pressure, everything is in the middle. In fact, the word medicine comes from the Latin word medi, which means medium, medi. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's the art of getting you to the middle. Mm -hmm. And so what we do with uh, food is we help the body stay in the middle so we stay away from the extremes which can make us ill. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not digressing, but when you said the alkaline and between the alkaline and acidic, I know from studying it that cancer cannot survive except in an acidic environment that's fed sugar. So that, that has to do with keeping in balance in the, the foods you eat to keep you from getting cancer. That's right. In fact, uh, the, the whole idea is that we should prevent cancer because if you listen closely to what oncologists say, there is no cure for cancer and there is no cure on the horizon in spite of all of the, the hype that goes around. Uh, but if you do get cancer, you definitely want to eat in a way that goes in harmony with the natural order because mm -hmm. you support the body's self-healing and, and self-protective uh, uh, mechanisms. Well, the immune system is amazing, and the body to heal itself is also amazing if we give it the right nourishment and the right food. That's right. I've even seen people uh, recover from terminal stage cancer. Uh, who were written off, uh, like you have three months to get your affairs mm -hmm. in order, mm -hmm. and the person lives another 25, 26 years. Uh, I've seen this happen because the body is an amazing self-healing wonder if we cooperate and do what the Taoists said with uh, Wu Wei. In other words, we go with the flow of nature and we support those natural mm -hmm. self-healing impulses and don't sabotage them. Well, even people that do decide to go chemotherapy and radiation, when they do nutritional therapy as well, it's not as bad on them, and sometimes they manage to survive the toxins that are being put in their body at the same time. Yes, that's right. Uh, I've heard many, many people tell me that the doctors are amazed how well they uh, get through that highly toxic chemotherapy because the body isn't dealing with all these chemical additives and all the bad food as well. You know, the average person eats about nine pounds of chemical additives per year. That means those, that's nine pounds of chemicals the body doesn't have to process and get out. And so obviously then that's, the body can deal more with these highly toxic uh, uh, treatments like chemotherapy, which, you know, unfortunately when they talk about survival rates, they like to talk about five-year survival rates because uh, these things are not much to write home about. And yeah. they don't talk about 10-year survival rates, but mm -hmm. five-year survival mm -hmm. rates. So. Because it comes back, because you're poisoning the body. <laughs> That's right. So it's much, <laughs> smarter, <laughs> yeah, it's much smarter to try to do everything you can to create healing in your body. And it is possible. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, food. And um, it's really difficult these days because I know there was a, what, a two years ago where they were saying, you know, should we label GMOs? And they voted against it. But I noticed a lot of people are putting those labels on non-GMO because people are demanding it. So it's so difficult to shop. You read ingredients, um, and some of them you can't even understand. I know if it's got more than two or three ingredients, I don't usually buy it, especially if it says GMO, or if it, says, if it doesn't say non-GMO, I won't buy it. But what you buy people, it's so confusing when you go in the supermarket. How would you shop? Well, the way I shop is, <clears throat> I always read labels, of course. I read labels, even in an organic food shop, I read the labels because uh, there are several things in natural foods that I don't want. Things mm -hmm. like canola oil. Exactly, and they're, they're in natural food yeah. shops. Yeah. Agave syrup, you know, that's mm -hmm. high fructose. Those mm -hmm. things I don't want, even if it's in an organic product. So you read the labels, inform yourself, because information is really the only weapon we have in this, and food is becoming more and more 
a difficult issue. So uh, knowledge is, is really important. Now, I, um, I, I get mostly organic things. You can't always get everything organic, but I just use common sense when I can't. Isn't there a deadly dozen, too? I mean, there are some that you definitely should try to get organic, and there are others that maybe you don't absolutely need organic, as long as you're eating the insides and maybe some of the toxins can get all the way through. Yeah, that's right. The, there is the dirty dozen, which are the, mm -hmm. the 12 foods that have the highest amount of pesticide residues. Mm -hmm. And it, it, everyone can find that on the internet, and it's really worth taking mm -hmm. the time to find out what the dirty dozen are. And there are also the dozen of those things that are the least problem, things like onions, there's not as much difference between organic and non-organic How about onions. bananas, avocados? Oh, yeah, avocado is not so much difference there. The big, yeah. the big ones are things like lettuce, oh, yeah. uh, wheat, uh, apples, peaches. Bananas, not bananas, I just said that. Um, potatoes. Yeah, potatoes are, are Tomatoes, very, yeah. Uh, berries. Yeah, potatoes are actually the well, number You're supposed of, to answer, but I know these, so I'm throwing it in. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, so it, th this is a, a good point to uh -huh. uh, learn what to, uh, to buy and what not to buy because uh, it's so valuable. And in the internet age, there's no reason why we don't know that. Mm -hmm. Just a, you know, a few clicks on the computer. But, but organic, and I agree with you because I've seen in health food stores, I go to health food stores sometimes, and it says organic, but like you said, canola oil we know is bad. I didn't realize agave syrup was high fructose, but I knew agave wasn't good for you. So it's, it, uh, and how do we know, is there a rule that says if it's USAD or whatever they call it, organic, it has to be organic? How do we know that they're truly organic? Yeah, well, you do want to get certified organic. Certified organic, That's right. okay. And if, because this is a U.S. government-sponsored thing, <clears throat> if someone actually goes against that and cheats, they'd actually be committing a federal crime. Oh, good, okay. So, so you can generally uh, mm -hmm. rely on that. You know, what, if, what about farmer's markets versus supermarkets? Well, farmer's markets are always better because, you know, the, directly from the person there, uh, supermarkets, have got better now. They, they, they do have uh, they're trying. organic section. They're, you know, they're adjusting to demand. Actually. Demand, yeah. It's, up. it's the people that are, yeah. they wouldn't care. They just want to make the money. If mm -hmm. you're not going to buy that other stuff, they're going to put that's, out the stuff you're going to that's buy. That's right. Mm -hmm. I've, I've bought things at farmer markets where you talk to the person and you can see this. they're, they're growing it without mm -hmm. any kind of chemical toxins mm -hmm. and you just have trust because you're, you're going to intuition. Yeah. yeah and I exactly. think intuition is really the key issue here because the food I eat is based on my intuitive feeling I get from eating that food more than an intellectual conviction that this is right for me. I use intuition a lot. I've saved myself a few times with that. Not so much with food, but with medical stuff. And what about muscle testing? Couldn't you hold a piece of food in your hand and, and do muscle testing to see if it's good for your body? Because isn't everybody's body different? Uh, good, good point here. Uh, first of all, yes, I think muscle testing is very interesting. I think people, if they take a little packet of sugar that you'd get in a cafe and hold it against the thymus here on the mm -hmm. chest, uh, you'll see that uh, you have no, <laughs> yeah, no strength at all. So it is good. You take mm -hmm. something else, you hold an organic carrot in your hand and it'll be strong. So definitely I think muscle testing is fun because it's non-invasive, it's just entertainment too. Mm -hmm. But uh, to the other point, we do have individual needs and that's exactly why we need to develop our intuition rather than just saying this is the way we're supposed to eat. So what I do in my book, I wrote a book called Eating the Wu Wei. And how do you spell that? <laughs> yeah, Eating the Wu Wei is a play on words. So Wu Wei in Taoism is W-U about? and then W-E-I is the phonetic way to write the Chinese. Uh, I wrote Eating the Wu Wei is it eat like the way to eat. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what I point out is that there, we cannot tell everybody how they should eat. But what we try to do is help people develop their intuitive ability to find out themselves what they need. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you have to first get a feeling for what is health, because many people, I mean, I've talked to people who are so constipated, they only have a bowel movement once every 10 days, and they think that's normal because they know nothing else. Uh, so you, you've got to first get a feeling for what health is, and then you can much better understand what is non-health. You know, where do I need to adjust my, my, uh, my conditions so that I get more in harmony with where I should be? I think that's a great point. And food is medicine. Food can be healthy and keep you healthy, or food can make you ill. But everybody's different too. Like if I say um, seafood is good, I can't do a general statement say seafood is good. First off, some people can't eat shellfish. It might be good for me, but it may not be good for you. Yeah, that's right. Um, first, there's the, the <clears throat> uh, food sensitivities or allergies just mm -hmm. always there. Now, 
food allergies are something that are often connected to a deficiency of minerals. In fact, in Germany, I worked with a spectrometric whole blood test in, in the clinic where we would look at the, it's a special German uh, test of the blood that they don't do uh, in most places. They're, they do have it in the U.S. now. But we found that uh, 96, 97% of the patients had serious mineral deficiencies. Oh. And uh, when you get these mineral deficiencies, then you're going to see the body reacting in ways like allergy or the immune system shuts down and they get cancer. Autoimmune disease is rampant. Yeah, autoimmune disease mm -hmm. is another good example of where this mm -hmm. comes from. The things that are rising now, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, Hashimoto is probably the most rampant disease going on right now. And you know, that's is, because of mineral deficiencies, and that's because the soil is depleted, and we're not getting the minerals in our foods. Yeah, well, it's got it's well, especially Hashimoto is a very complex issue, but uh, the, the the immune system reacts in a crazy way, and this crazy reaction has to do with the uh, mineral deficiencies, and then the other part of the equation is the assault of the chemicals and the oh. environmental contamination, which yeah. also affects the thyroid as well as the mm -hmm. whole body. So we get contaminated from the soil, from the sprays, the chemicals, and even from the air. That's right. We could say that the body is basically not intended for the uh, environment of the 21st century. So uh, either we're going to mutate and survive, or we're going to have to figure something out. Yes, well, if you look at the statistics right now that come from the U.S. health authorities, of the people alive right now, one out of three women, 35%, will get cancer, and one out of two men will get cancer at 47%. So imagine how interesting this subject should be for people. If you know that you have a one out of two chance of getting cancer, yeah. uh, that's... But I doubt whether you will. I mean, you, you know about nutrition. Nutrition's a way to, one way to fight it. Yeah, but I, I'm definitely not concerned about that because I no, know I'm what causes either. cancer. I know how to prevent it. So exactly. I'm sure that uh, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm going to be in the 53% the that doesn't get cancer. Do you test your, um, like I have these strips where you can check if you're alkaline or acidic, and you want to be somewhere in between. Well, you want to, if you're going to check saliva, you should definitely be at least 7.0, 7.0, which is neutral, yeah. and then above that is alkaline. Uh, yeah. with, with the urine test, uh, it, it fluctuates, but generally yeah. it should be 6.8 to 7.4, which yeah. also shows more alkalinity. Mm -hmm. Boy, this, it's so complicated. Like I was saying, maybe it's, um, what, how would you, um, uh, what would you say to growing your own food, your own vegetables? Like a lot of people have their own little gardens now. Oh yeah, well that, you know, anyone who has the chance should do it. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the way people live today, it's no longer so, there's not so much land available. Yeah. You know, during the Second World War, 70% of all vegetables eaten in the U.S. was homegrown. Yeah. I remember my Welsh grandfather going back in his garden, he had all these runner beans and they had chicken, so they had fresh yeah. eggs every day and they had all their vegetables. I'll say these, these gardens, I forget what they're called, the hydroponic or something, a friend of mine sells them and you can grow, even in a small patio spot, you can grow all these things they grow up. So yeah. even if you have a little space, there's a way. And then we, we have these, what do you call planters things, you know, these, that you put your... So we, we don't have a big yard, but we have enough room to grow all kinds of herbs and tomatoes and corn. Well, I think so a it's good, fun uh, too. Yeah, that and, it tastes and it, good. <laughs> it does, and it also helps people develop their food awareness mm -hmm. to me, for, like what goes into making food mm -hmm. and the quality of food. So that if you're growing your own food and you're tasting those carrots out of your own garden, <gasps> you know you don't want to eat yeah. just normal supermarket carrots because they have yeah, no taste. Exactly. I don't eat tomatoes except from our garden. So the rest of the year, when I can't get them, that's another thing. Um, you should eat food in season, right? That's right. Food in season is one of the basic ideas behind Wu Wei of uh, eating according to nature. So you don't eat things that, that are just out of season. And today, mm -hmm. because of international transport, people have gone further and further away from that. Yeah, it's so sad. I don't want to go too much to do with these, these um, factory farms. I mean, the, fact, the animal factories and things. It's it, first off so incredibly cruel to the animals, and it's, it's terrible for people. Oh, that's I mean, right. We, we have a problem with their, they're giving them antibiotics because they're so crowded together they get disease. And then we take in the antibiotics and then we can't, we're antibiotic re resistant if we need a real good antibiotic to kill something. I mean, that's right. Just, and the, the U.S. is especially in trouble because the U.S. allows BGH, bovine growth hormone, in dairy food. So they... They treat the, the dairy cows with BGH to increase milk production. Right, so and it's, hormones. Yeah, and it's proven to cause yeah. prostate cancer, oh, and geez. it's suspected in others. And it's so dangerous that other industrialized countries will not allow it. I know it's amazing that other countries in the United States, I know <clears throat> half most of our families in the British Isles, and they said, no, we don't, 
we, they don't allow high fructose corn syrup here, and they don't allow this, mm -hmm. and they don't allow... Uh, we used to think our country was one of the best countries in the world, and now... Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> people the, want uh, our garbage the, sent to them. The industrial lobbies put an end to that. The yeah. industrial lobbies in the U.S. have such a power, such a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a grip on the political system, that they're able to get, push these things through. Like imagine what it could be the justification for allowing a, a hormone that is proven to cause prostate cancer. Yeah. It's just because it improves the milk production. Mm -hmm. But this is another example. I was just going in on something you mentioned about the cruelty of this system today, that not only do they take the calves away <sighs> from the mother cows as soon as they're born, mm -hmm. but that they treat them with these uh, 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 hormones and the udders of these cows sometimes drag on the floor, so oh, they get treated with, uh, with you know, the antiseptics because uh, they basically need cow bras. Oh, it's, so, it's really sad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so sad now, I don't know if I can keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, the bottom line is you've got to be proactive, you've got to eat organic, uh, especially the dirty dozen. Yeah. Organic milk. I just use, I use organic milk, but even, even with organic milk, is that safe? Well, I, it, you're, you're better off if you eat no dairy food. Now, mm -hmm. if we come back to Wu Wei, like, let's eat according to nature. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when you take cow milk, you're taking something that nature intends for a the calf. calf. What just, about cheese? Just for the, well, cheese is part of milk. I know, so, and I love cheese. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have different areas. We have things we love, and then we have yeah, things we realize, well, this isn't really, this yeah. isn't going to promote my health. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what dairy food does, besides being a very odd thing for the human body to consume, the humans are the only ones who eat or take the, the milk of other animals, Yes, is that uh, the milk protein actually gets into the lymph fluid and clogs it. Oh, so geez. many people suffering is because of a sluggish, yeah. clogged lymph system. And if they would just stop eating dairy food, their lymph system would clear, yeah. it would help. There are two, two things that clog the lymph system. And remember that the lymph fluid, we have more volume of that than we do blood. Oh, I didn't know that. Is that Besides the, the dairy protein doing this, we have a general over acidic condition called acidosis. Those two things will make the lymph system sluggish. That means your cells do not get the nutrients they need, uh, and you can't carry away the metabolic waste fast enough, so you get a self-toxic system. Well, when we were kids, we grew up with milk. They said milk was good for bones. But isn't it true that the more milk you drink, that actually depletes the calcium? That's right. The, the, fact, the, the, the claim that milk gives strong bones was just a very clever advertising trick by the mm -hmm. dairy industry. Mm -hmm. There is interestingly not one shred of evidence that that's true. In mm -hmm. fact, what you said is true, that the more milk you take, the more fast you'll get osteoporosis. Now, I would recommend everybody that doesn't believe this to read a book by Dr. Robert Thompson mm -hmm. from Alaska. It's called The Calcium Lie. The Calcium Lie. Yeah. And uh, he lays it all out there very well. And he does it in a scientific medical way that there's no way to rebut. Oh, man his uh, arguments. In fact, he lectures before doctors who don't know it. The subtitle of his book is called What Your Doctor Doesn't Know Can Kill You. I've got that book. <laughs> well, then you know what I'm talking about. I've got to read it. I haven't read I've yeah, got so yeah. many books. I've got read to read it. Read the book. It's very good. If you read that, you'll know why you shouldn't eat cheese. You shouldn't oh, take okay. calcium supplements. People actually are ill because of a calcium excess, yeah. and they're desperate trying to get more calcium. Oh, it's because they think that the bones are made mm -hmm. of calcium. Dr. Thompson points out that the bones are made of several minerals of which calcium is one of them and when you emphasize one mineral of all of them like calcium you suppress others especially magnesium so you get a magnesium deficiency and that is as bad for bone health as having a calcium deficiency you know it's it's um all the information is great but you had the interest in learning about it but most people don't have the time i'm sure they want to be healthy and then they get all this misinformation so What's some advice you could give people that are watching us? Yeah, I think uh, really uh, you have to uh, uh, inform yourselves uh, thoroughly. It, you know, it's really worth taking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I would recommend uh, reading my book, or at least you can go on my, my website. I'm going to read it. Yeah, you can, <laughs> I'm you can read. You can read my food guidelines if you don't want to, to get the book, okay. because the food guidelines are there. They're based on my experience mm -hmm. of many years. I've watched hundreds and hundreds of people recover their health. And the fact that I have never been sick since, you know, more than getting a cold now and then, yeah. I haven't had any serious illness yeah. since I began this. I have four children and eight grandchildren, and, you know, everything's running fine. My children decided to follow Your protocol. Uh, mm -hmm. th this thing, so they haven't rebelled and gone into junk food. And um, the, the results I see at the personal level, family level, and my 
my professional experience as a food coach, yeah. is that these guidelines I give really work. And the, the core is that you just get rid of the nasties. It's like dairy food, I, never pork. Pork is a very, uh, I mean, if people can decide themselves if they want to eat meat, that's, mm -hmm. that's also a subject to talk about, but pork is the most mm -hmm. toxic of all of the uh, meats. Then uh, chemicals in food, we talked about. Sugar, sugar mm -hmm. is uh, the, the bane of mankind. Mm -hmm. How about honey? Well, honey Good is, honey. yeah, honey, the, the problem is it's very high in fructose and it's too strong, really. If you want to have a sweetener that's going to keep your blood sugar mm -hmm. more in balance, then go for grain sweeteners like barley malt or rice syrup. What about stevia? Well, stevia is okay, too, if mm -hmm. it's pure. You have to be sure it's 100% pure, yeah, because there are a lot of uh, mixtures trying to mm -hmm. make money there. But those are okay, but I mean, if you have honey now and then, that's not a big deal, yeah. but eating a lot of honey uh, is uh, too much fructose, and uh, you know, the, actually yeah. the bees should be able to Keep enjoy their, own, their honey. own honey, that's right. <laughs> you know, this has just been so amazing. Um, I have other questions, but I think we've done, we've covered a lot of stuff, and that's a lot of stuff for people to absorb, so um, we will have a, all that information when we talk about it. People will be able to see it. They'll be able to go to your website, They'll be able to also email you is okay. Emailing is okay too, yeah. Okay, and then your book gives all the information we talked about. And like you said, if they aren't able to purchase it, hopefully they will, they can go to your website and get the same information. Yeah, the, the e-book is available on, online. E-book, oh, okay. Yeah. And otherwise, well, that's if nice. the, for the paper book, they can just contact me. Uh, because this is a book so specialized that uh, bookstores are not interested in carrying it, so it's oh, really okay. Just, so they have to get it through you. Yeah, through me. But okay. the ebook they could get just online. E yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add? I yeah, I think one thing I'd like to mention is that if they look at my guidelines, that your viewers, they'll find that uh, I have a, a place for uh, seaweed, and the reason I recommend seaweed is because of the mineral deficiencies I talked about before mm -hmm. are so rampant that and the food that's grown today is so mineral poor that we need seaweed to get those minerals that are lacking. Oh, that's good. And it's one of the major issues. And there is no food that has got a, a mineral density like seaweed, and it's also the most alkalizing food. Oh. And uh, some of the healing successes I've seen, I'm sure, is mainly because of this switch to seaweed, which suddenly mm -hmm. brings their mineral balance up mm -hmm. and, uh, and their alkalinity up. And where else can you get uh, wild food? Like, we don't eat much wild uh, wildly no. grown food, but uh, no. No, seaweed grows wild in the sea. Yeah. The major... Uh, uh, it's getting polluted though, the ocean's getting polluted. Well, so that's polluted. just what I was <laughs> going to say. The, ma the major uh, uh, objection to seaweed is that it's polluted, but we can see that about fish, because mm -hmm. fish go here and there, you don't know where they've been. But seaweed just grows in one place, yeah. and some, some water is polluted and some isn't. Mm -hmm. And the seaweed sold in organic food shops is very well controlled. It comes from areas where the, the waters are still very pristine, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, there's no problem. In fact, I had a hair mineral analysis done, and the uh, naturopath told me he'd never seen so little heavy metals in hair before. Wow, that's amazing. You know, we were talking about um, animal, the fish moving around, so um, I was even going to ask you about, like, you know, small fish with the mercury versus medium fish versus large fish, but even any fish now, if it's swimming in the wrong place, can... Well, it is an interesting point here with the fish. If you have sardines, for example, sardines have a very short lives. It's very in, you know, fulfilling so, life, but, it, but it's a short life. <laughs> fulfilling? How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they are always uh, good. Uh, Wild salmon, Alaska salmon, shows also wild, well. not farmed. Yeah. Wild. But the, the problem is really tuna fish, because the other big fish like uh, shark and swordfish, people don't eat a lot of, but people eat a lot of tuna fish, and tuna is high in mercury for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. Um, I hate to end on a sad note, but I mean, you can tell that the food system's terrible because I've never seen so many heavy people in my life. Is that's that because right. of how bad the food system is? Yeah, that's right. What Not we are witnessing right now is a degeneration of human health unique in human history. And uh, when you come to the U.S., because I do a lot of international travel, every time I come to the U.S., uh, it always strikes me as soon as I land at the airport <laughs> that I'm seeing people with a level of obesity you don't see in other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this, if you read what the CDC, Center for Disease Control, uh, says, that just in, t in 10 years, we're going to have a doubling of diabetes, and in 30 years, we're going to have a tripling of diabetes. And that means a doubling of Alzheimer, 
and a tripling of Alzheimer because Alzheimer is basically called diabetes type 3. It is, it is what happens to you as an extension of diabetes 2. In other words, the mechanism that causes diabetes 2 leads to diabetes 3 or Alzheimer. And this is the future. Mm -hmm. So everybody should... Everybody should take, yeah. listen up and take responsibility. Yeah, because that's the future. It doesn't have to be, but mm -hmm. with the dynamics of the present trends, that's what we're going to see if we don't do something mm -hmm. else than what we're doing. I think when I was traveling, I think the thinnest people I saw were in Italy. I yeah. mean, I, I was in Germany, Austria, Britain, yeah. and Italy, and the, the trim is, well, and okay. you know, that's because a lot of American fast food's going over there, so they're starting to get a little heavier. It's changing, yeah. that's right, but the Mediterranean people are the best. The Greeks mm -hmm. have the longest life expectancy in Europe, the so, Greeks, and yeah. uh, the further north you go, also the more dairy food you have, you know, the, oh, the, yeah. uh, the dairy food developed in northern Europe because of the climate. They couldn't depend so much on plant food, and dairy mm -hmm. food was something that just developed out of that. Yeah. But you, the, the problems that come from, from uh, dairy food excess, you see more in northern Europe than in southern Europe. Mm -hmm. Boy, there's so much, so much in this. But I think people check your website and then look at the book. They'll get a lot of good information, and hopefully they'll be inspired, and they care about their health, and they'll, they'll research. Thank you. Do you want to add anything? Uh, I think that's uh, pretty we much it. it? Just tell, yeah, just tell people uh, uh, be sure to chew well because when you eat oh. organic whole foods, uh, if you eat as fast as people eat junk food or fast food, then they'll find it to be a bit uh, hard to digest. The, yeah. the food should be mixed with saliva well. That's mm -hmm. the first step in digestion. That's right. I didn't think about that, but chewing your food. And besides, you enjoy it more if you just chew That's it right, yeah. and focus on your food, not on your electronics Thanks. and your other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great talking with you. I've learned a lot. And I, I knew some, but I've learned a lot talking with you. This is just great. I'm, you're doing wonderful work. Um, so you're gonna, but you don't live in, you travel, so people can't catch you in a lecture around here, can yeah. they? Yeah, well, no, uh, I'm, I don't have anything planned here. I'm now going to Washington, D.C. in a couple mm -hmm. of days. So this next weekend, I have a big program going on in Washington, mm -hmm. and they got people hooked up uh, yeah. from uh, Minneapolis and other places to pick it up. So it looks like we'll have a, a great weekend. Keep up the good work. I wish okay. you were here. I'd talk to you some more, but I've got to be happy with what we just did. <laughs> Thank you so much. And thank you folks for watching another edition of Pauline Interviews. Mm -hmm.